everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Bish's RV, and that is not just another stick and tin camper. That's how I feel about this one. This is the East to West Delaterra 261 RB. The, the alphabet soup of this doesn't mean much to you, but what we have here is a gigantic rear bathroom, awesome super slide living room, and private enclosed king or true queen bedroom. And that's one of just a bunch of features on this one that really blew me away. And that's why I say it's not just another stick and tin. A entry level quote unquote stick and tin doesn't usually have the option for a true queen or a big 70 by 80 king that you can walk around. It doesn't usually have struts under the bed. It is a totally carpetless uh, flooring system, no vents in the floor, no carpet in the slide, which is so rare in this class. I can only think of one or two other brands that are doing that. We're also getting nicer, big, like full on theater seating, not just a little janky jackknife sofa sitting across from a TV. They're fully outfitting the entertainment center with a TV and fireplace and not just saying, well, you could go get your own. There are some benefits to going and get your own, but it's also nice to have something for this kind of money that's just complete and ready to roll right from the word go. The, uh, the ceiling is taller, which makes the shower space big and it doesn't have a radius shower. You're bonking your elbows the whole time. And wait till you see what they're doing with roof access on this. I think you're going to see more. And actually that's the thing. I think that East to West in this stick and tin class right here is really finding a way to get ahead of the curve. They're really taking your feedback and adopting it like a heated enclosed belly, Goodyear tires. There are so many features that are commonly associated with higher budget, higher class trailers all wrapped up into this thing. It, to me, it is a terribly impressive series of features in one camper. And like I said, this is a layout you've certainly seen before. It's extremely common in the world of laminated RVs, but it's always kind of struck me as odd that you just don't see this layout as much in the stick and tin market. What I love about what they're doing here are how many of those smart laminated features they did bring to this one. Like I said, I don't feel it's just another stick and tin. And there are going to be a couple areas where it does, uh, you know, kind of show the symptom of the fact that it is built with a bit of a specific price point in mind. But what they have included is actually what really impresses me. Like, look at this. Uh, right down at the bottom, there are no heat vents in the floor. And they are one of just maybe one or two stick and tin trailer brands that have opted for a completely carpetless slide. So this is as easy cleaning as it's going to get. Also, um... Uh, it's like almost everybody and their brother who's uh, building this floor plan in the stick and tin world, which is a slim number of people, they they tend to do a lot of like just simple jackknife sofas. This is giving us a nice reclining theater seat. And theoretically, if there's room for a theater seat, there should be room for a hide -a bed uh, there. If that is your choice to give us a, uh, a little more comfortable view of the entertainment, which is not mounted all the way up to the ceiling. Now, that being said, all the way up to the ceiling, we have that little storage pocket, although it lacks any kind of door, which is not my, especially something way up high. I don't like open storage, especially up high. But um, let me move the camera over. I was kind of leaning. From the right-hand theater seat, this is what you're looking at. And if I lean over to the left-hand theater seat, it's even more of a, uh, it's called nerdism number 37, no neck wrecker entertainment center. Now, down below here again, another little open pocket of storage. I don't dislike that as much down low as I do up high for some reason. Just feels like stuff can fall further. But you've got the electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster right across from you right there. So when you kick your feet up, you've got a nice little, uh, you know, way to keep yourself warmed up on a, on a chilly spring or fall day. Kind of like today. Like this morning, it's 43 degrees. And you don't need any special Arctic package on a camp or anything like that to handle a 43 degree day. But it is awful nice when you do get, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, extra heating when and where you need it. Now, one of the things that I'm not a big fan of on this floor plan is a complete lack of any and all window in the entry door. That has become so common. And I'm not saying common means it's okay or it's justified. I personally really don't prefer that. What I do like, though, is this is a couple's camper. It gives us some awesome living space, the nice bright colors, a taller ceiling, and some sweet, sweet storage. Now, you may have noticed in our floor plan in a flash kind of flyby footage how this has that little motion light up in here, up in here. And uh, if you want to, you can turn the motion mode off. You can just turn that on completely. But one of the things I like here, 
I, I'm, I, I say all the time, I'm not a big fan of open storage. Um, there's, uh, you know, uh, just a big pocket of space here. So you might have to come up with some kind of, like, one of those little small shelf tension bars to keep your boxes of mac and cheese or whatever in place. But notice how the shelves don't go too deep. That also leaves space over here if you wanted to add, like, a little, um, like, uh, broom mount or something like that. A little place to hold a broom. That's a great place for one of those. Now, over here around the corner, you've got yourself that 10.7 uh, cubic foot, 12-volt DC compressor fridge. It occupies the same face space, the width and the height of an 8 cubic foot gas electric two-way, but because it doesn't have to have the passive absorption uh, condenser unit in the back, it can be much, much deeper. That is how those get more storage. They are also faster cooling. They are travel safe because they just operate off the battery in transit. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're going to be on a ferry or go through a tunnel, you don't have to, like you know, turn the gas off on your fridge and, and hope that your eggs don't start sweating when you, you know, you get all done with it. Now, there are limited um, power outlets over here in the kitchen, just the one set there to the right of the sink, but it's also back kind of in the coffee maker corner of the sink, as it were, so it's not too bad. There's also a couple little nice touch details here I want to make sure we uh, point out. So first of all, you hear me all the time, I wish you had space for a wastebasket. This one does. Good drawer space right there. Big farm sink with a nice high-rise sprayer faucet. Also, it's the little devil in the, the details thing. I don't see many brands other than Coachman do this with regularity. And that's what I'm really learning to respect about East and West. They take some of the very best features from everybody and just kind of lump them into one. So most RV brands, this is what you're going to see. The draw strings for the uh, the blinds next to your cooking source, well, they, they just kind of dangle down and there's not always much you can do about them. It is possible those could actually get sort of tangled up into your burners. You're probably going to be aware of that, but theoretically, you could burn one of your drawstrings. So sometimes it's the little four cent part that makes the big difference. So when I see a brand actually take the time to do things like get those little boat anchor uh, kind of cleats there where you can tie your strings up and get them away from the fire, I appreciate that. That's the little kind of stuff that I look for. Now, um, up top here, I mentioned earlier, this thing has a taller ceiling. That along with the lighter colors uh, makes the RV look huge inside. And up here, we have a venting skylight. Now, if you look up inside of it, you see it doesn't necessarily have a fan, but it's also not too far from a 12-volt power source, a.k.a. one of the ceiling lights. So if you wanted to install a fan into that vent, that would not be uh, a really tall order uh, for one of our tech team's ambitious RV. That's that's not a, a, a big thing for us to have to try to tackle. And again, what remember I was talking about carpetless, ventless flooring. Um, you know, there's so many high-end, smart, laminated features they still manage to pack in here. And full drawers below the dinette on ball-bearing glides. That is something I don't think I have ever seen in a stick and tin uh, classification before. Maybe I, I'm just missing something, but that is just not what you find every day. Now, there are a couple things like the big windows open for airflow, but the side windows do not. I would love to see that side window open. But again, I understand that they are fighting against the price point, but they have done so many good things already. It almost feels like, wow, I, you know, why didn't they just keep going with it? Well, the problem is when you just keep going with it, you start getting a little too heavy and a little too expensive. Now, they gave us a, uh, a nice sliding privacy door here uh, for the bedroom, actually. I think I have some footage of that. Let me back up. I just realized I was prepared for this moment. Also showcasing the little sleeper dinette function that we have right there. So you got that barn-style sliding door, but they framed it out really nicely to really help clearly define living room versus uh, bedroom. Now, when you're traveling, they put this really nice positive latch system in there. If I'm going to ask for one little thing, and this is something as an owner I could come up with, I would like a, uh, a, a, a latch mate over here or on the corner so I could latch the door from the bedroom to effectively lock my bedroom to have evening privacy, which some people really appreciate uh, if they are doing things like aggressively folding laundry or fighting the um, fitted sheets here on that king bed. More on that in just a moment. First of all, though, as long as we're talking storage, I wanted to lift that plywood deck up 
And look at the big bank of storage that you have here under the, uh, the bed. Now again, that is not terribly uncommon, but again, consider this. This is still a stick and tin camper. So they're doing the nicer things that not everybody does, even at a higher dollar laminated segment. If you're a regular watcher of this channel, how many RVs have you seen, even in a higher dollar budget range, that put no struts under the bed, or they try to cheese it and put just one under the bed? And the problem is, the, the, a single gas strut can barely hold the back breaker way for a death mattress that these things come on. Uh, you know, we're just calling a spade a spade and a duck a duck. Chances are you're going to at least put a phone topper on that. I, I don't mind being real about things. But the daily use feature functions, the stuff that's that you're going to touch every single day, they really focus on that here uh, so that, you know, for your, your average travel around journey or whatever, you're going to have a good time. You're not going to be constantly annoyed by the little... Like, you know when somebody squeezes the toothpaste from the wrong end of the tube? When they only put one strut on or no strut on, that's the toothpaste from the wrong end of the tube! Now, as I mentioned, that is a king bed. Now, when RVs say king, it's usually something like a 72 or a 70 by 80 king bed, which is some wonky RV king bed, but it is not a 60 by 80 true queen. It's about 10 inches wider to give you more space. It does mean that it's a little bit tighter to walk around the bed, but the cool thing with these is you have a choice between the king that we're looking at here or a queen and this little side drawer over here is a big part of the reason why you see how it kind of cuts in under the hanging closet a little bit well the hanging closet is effectively queen sized something else that is also queen sized is that storage that i crawled inside of as well as the bed decking here so remember that, well, I can't really see it from here, but that plywood deck that we looked at, if you shave that down a little bit, you could just slot a queen in this. Now you can also factory option a queen in here, but you don't have to. Um, something that I really, really like are these little headboard pockets that they have, um, you know, kind of behind those side drawers. And I like that those drawers aren't so deep that it looks like you have to give an elephant an enema to reach up in there. Not something i or the elephant enjoys i'm sure i i don't i don't know anyway i like that there's household and usb outlets on both sides of the bed personally i would kind of like them tucked away up in that pocket i suspect the reason they're not doing that is so that you can see there's household and usb outlets so you don't assume there's none because i have really learned over the years when people can't overtly see something they often presume it is not there so a lot of rv builders will hedge their bets against that concept i don't know that i like that logic but i i know that i understand and uh i respect it so that's that's kind of what we're looking at here um spinning you around real slow here you know something i didn't check i'm going to look to see if that is a pivoting swing arm tv mount um and if it is not that is such an easy thing to change out that's just that's the kind of stuff i just call screwdriver work and i and i always recommend people don't get too hung up on screwdriver work if you know a couple minutes with like a, a power screw gun or a manual screwdriver even could solve the, sol the problem. Chances are it's a low dollar and easily solved problem. Oh, by the way, all the countertops in this are sealed edge thermal foil. I still like to talk about that because still not everyone is doing that consistently across the board. Some brands are doing it in the kitchen only. Um, you know, it, it really does vary um, a, a, a little bit. Now, again, over here, this is one of the things that kind of knocked my socks off on this. Um, the fact that you are getting a, a full on like theater seat over here, or once again, because it has that size, uh, you know, logically you, you might be able to slot a hide bed in here. The thing is too, if you put a hide bed in it, there's so much room at the foot of the sofa that if the hide bed were open, it wouldn't block access to anything. And tell me that is not boardwalk and park place viewing right there. No neck wrecker entertainment center central. You know, one of my favorite things about this though. This sofa actually comes with its own soup bowl. You go, what? Soup soup bowl sofa? Is that what that idiot said? Yeah, check this out. Look inside this armrest right here. It's got a big old plastic soup bowl built right into it, so you can keep your Campbell's chunky soup at arm's length while you're watching the game. Now, speaking of that, not only did I discover that, yes, in fact, the TV does pivot, but this one is TTC, baby. It is Toilet TV Certified. So when the Browns make a run to the Super Bowl, you've got yourself a front row ticket over here and you never have to miss a moment of the action. Now, 
All joking aside, look at the space around this porcelain toilet and the fact that we're getting a porcelain toilet. Once again, you know, I, I've talked about how this has some big laminated features in a stick and tin glass. Look, we got the big theater seat, ventless flooring, carpetless. Uh, you know, the taller ceiling is nice. A lot of laminated trailers don't do that. We got the bed struts and a porcelain toilet. There are so many things they're doing here. Uh, I think it's awesome. That extra tall ceiling means extra headroom for me. I personally, I, I talk about it all the time. I'm not a fan of open pocket storage like this, but RV owners who have watched my videos have said, yeah, but my towels don't fall out of that because it's thin enough. I can stack them in there, roll them up burrito style. It works just fine. Okay, well, you know, I kind of understand that. And I, I tell you what, I will personally give credit to an actual owner's insights over my own. Now, I've got a lot of years of looking at RVs, but there's a lot of people with a lot of more years using RVs out there, and that I appreciate. Now, flipping the other way, basically walking out of the shower, that's her point of view right now. I like that set of uh, power outlets by that big chunk of counter space right there. That's a nice touch. And just to give you kind of another angle, sort of from the bird's eye view, uh, <laughs> from the skylight of the space around that toilet, that is just extremely fluffy friendly. Also, took a second to close up the slides to show you how she operates in road mode. Um, and you lose the bedroom. Let's get that right out of the way. That's going to be a real kind of sticking factor for a lot of folks. With the slide closed from the main entry door, you're not going to get to the bedroom. But we can obviously get to the bathroom, and you can uh, kind of snake your way through here a little bit. And if you do that, you can get over here to the refrigerator, to the sink, to all the drawers. So it is definitely like travel stop friendly. But if you're going to make a travel stay over, you need to find like an empty parking lot at night so you can deploy that slide out. And I think that's something uh, a lot of people don't always consider. Like during the day, if you stop and you need to open the slide to get to the bedroom, I get that that can be a problem. There's a lot of other traffic out there plugging places up. But if you're making an overnight stay over, there's a lot of open asphalt out there. Pull into like a Walmart parking lot or something like that. There's a lot of open places where you can still open the slide to get to the bedroom overnight. Now, that's not a guarantee, and it really depends on where you're at and what you're doing, but that's something I don't think everybody thinks about, and hopefully that extra little insight might maybe help you in your decision-making process. That's my goal with the whole video thing here that we're doing, you know? And I really like, they've got like a classy kind of look and feel on the outside. It's just simple, it's clean, it's understated, and I think it's going to look good behind almost any color vehicle. I know some people really like the color of the uh, the RV to kind of go with their vehicle. If you've got, you know, white, silver, black, certainly it's going to look great. But you got a blue or red truck, I think it's still going to look good back there. It's not going to look like some janky mismatch. Like, you know when you're seeing a vehicle go down the road and like the, uh, the, the hood or the quarter panel doesn't match because they had to get it from somewhere else? Like, it just looks funky, doesn't it? You don't have that here. It's going to look good. Now, one of the things that I mentioned in our uh, early footage here is how they are giving us a nice full pass-through. Now, when you look at this, though, like, you're like, yes, cool, nice big door, but wait a minute. What is that blocking my way? And that, my friends, is one of the things that I think is one of the more exceptional features on this trailer, that enclosed kind of docking center right there. Um, you know, where you've got your, like, cable hookup, your city water hookup, just some nice features like that you just don't usually find in this category. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so, I mean, my, my brain works um, oddly. And I saw this cover, which I love the fact that they're putting a cover on their power jack to keep it protected a little bit from the weather to help keep the switches from fouling out. But this is what went through my mind. It's currently zero dark 30. This is Ghost Unit Spectre going in to capture target over. Get him! Get him! Target acquired! Target acquired! You're going to Guantanamo Bay! Come on! Come on! So yeah, that's how my brain do. <laughs> and did I eat paint chips as a kid? I don't know. I've got memory loss, so I can't really tell you for certain. Regardless, let's get over here. Um, down below, this is another, I think, really good quality. Not everybody in this class is doing this. Like, you're seeing a lot of RVs. If you get down below them like this, you might see some are enclosed. Some are only enclosed holding tanks. This is a fully enclosed and forced air heated belly for extended season camping. That is something everyone's going to like. Something I think nobody's going to like, though, 
are the split sewer outlets. But as always, I like to share you the real deal of Vander Holyfield. I want you to know the good with the bad so you know exactly what you're getting for your money here. Now, one of the uh, qualities that I really like on these, they originally started doing it as a temporary substitution, and that is going to Goodyear Endurance Radials. That has since become standard on these because they had such a positive experience. So many people on videos like mine, maybe not mine exclusively, but I know certainly on these here, a lot of people said, I really like those Goodyear tires. I wish they would keep those. And East to West said, man, you know what? You got it. Um, outside here, I do wish the power awning was just a wee bit longer. That wouldn't bother me. But there's a couple things over here I do really like also. Uh, how often do you hear me gripe about the speakers being mounted too high? Well, these right here, well, these mounted at about your chesticles. So you're not blowing away the neighbors with your freedom rock, brother. Also, down below over here, we have ourselves a propane cooker hooker. Uh, so you can do some grilling and chilling. Black tank flush over here. I'd prefer it on the other side of the RV, but that's the most direct route to the black holding tank effectively. And did you see that uh, like garden hose sprayer thing in the docking center? You could use it out there with hot and cold, or you can use it here for cold water only. Now, Mr. Steve Z is a regular viewer. Shout out, uh, shout out to Steve Z, who's constantly saying, this RV is just one roof ladder away from being perfect. Well, guess what, Steve? Are you tired of annoying RV manufacturers who give you no way to access your fully walkable roof? Well, East to West has the solution. They are including the mount for this uh, telescopic removable ladder that you're seeing here. And I want to be very clear about the fact that what is included with the RV is the mounting bracket uh, and obviously the support structure in the wall to accept that bracket. The ladder we're looking at here is not part of the RV, is not included with the RV. This is a ladder I personally happen to own and I keep here at work for demonstrations specifically like this. But I tell you what, as someone who gets up and down on a lot of RVs, I love the fact that it goes up above the roof line. And Maybe the ladder is not directly included from the manufacturer, but that is an easy thing for us to take care of for you. Kind of like this one happened to have that swing arm TV bracket, but if it didn't, that's easy stuff we can do for you. If you love everything about this RV and the only thing you need is just the ladder, call us. I'm sure we can make stuff happen to get you camping. But I just want to applaud East to West for being one of the few stick and tin brands out there who is giving us access to their walkable roofing because recently here there's been a trend of some brands not only uh, not offering a factory ladder, but some have actually removed ladder prep from their walls so you can't even add one after the fact. At least the option and the ability is still here. And in a way, it's not bad that it's removable so that you don't gotta worry about the unruly neighborhood kids climbing up and down this thing and falling in a lawsuit and everything else. And also, while we're up here, I think it is worth pointing out the fact that they're including a roof solar prep plug here. So like right now with a 12 volt fridge and no solar, this is definitely like a, uh, you know, a, a park use kind of camper. Although that refrigerator will stay powered when you're in transit. But let's say you're way out there and then there, you know, well, the woods would block a lot of stuff. You get the idea. When you're untethered and unplugged, it has the ability for you to add some solar panelage. And that is absolutely, again, the kind of thing that we can assist you with here so sometimes people ask well how much is solar you got to keep in mind solar is not a one-size-fits-all thing it's a what size fits you so we can get yeah it could cost anywhere from a couple hundred bucks to a couple thousand bucks let us know how you plan to camp how you want to use the RV and what your expectations are and then we can start to shape a solar package that fits your needs and of course, as always, I'll leave you a link in the video description where you can uh, check for pricing and availability at any of our stores across the nation. Um, additionally, I will leave down there for you if you're like, man, I really like that layout, but I would actually prefer one of those laminated brands that you've been talking about. I will leave you just a slew of options from like Imagine, Rockwood, Flagstaff, Alpha Wolf, uh, Heritage Glen, uh, and, and just so many others down there. So that if you wanna see something to compare this against, I think what you're going to see is what I'm feeling right now, where unless you just don't want a wood skeleton and, tin, and, and aluminum skin product, stick and tin is the tongue in cheek phrase for that, by the way, um, you're gonna see that this has almost all the features of those bigger, more expensive brands wrapped up into something that, albeit a little bit heavier, is definitely a little bit more accessible on the price tag compared to some of those. But that's the thing. There's different strokes for different folks. We have all these different camper brands and I'd love to hear from you. How do you think this compares? Do you think they were successful? 
Um, do you think that I'm calling it right? Do you, did I miss something? Is there a problem I haven't pointed out? Is there a hiccup? Uh, and if you are an actual owner of one of these, I would really, really like it if you chime in and share your experience because actual owner experience, like I said, so much more valuable than anything that I could spout out. That's my two cents. So folks, until next time, thank you again for tuning in. Take care, stay safe, have fun. Best wishes from Bishes, everyone.